Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video and today we will be talking about five ways you can improve your photography during the winter. Let's get into it. So the first thing of course you got to do during the winter, the first challenge to your photography during the winter is the fact that it's unpleasant to be outdoors when you're not prepared for the weather. So the first thing to do is buy a coat or dig one up. It doesn't have to be pretty, it doesn't have to be nice to look at. However, it does need to be waterproof, warm, fit you, and basically that's it. Have a hood. Gotta have a hood. Once you have all those things, you're set. You put that on, and it could be the summer for all you care, because you are warm. Also, gloves are good, boots are good, outerwear. Tip one, outerwear. The next thing you can do to improve your photos in the winter is to shoot tighter. See, in the winter, typically, uh, the world is kind of gross. Excuse me to the world, but it's not particularly nice to look at when it's all gray and kind of nasty. So, if you shoot tighter, only at the bits that are nice to look at, that looks nicer. Nice bits, nice looking photos, okay, I think that's pretty simple. But, for example, just to, so my usual camera that I shoot with is the Nikon D750 with a 50mm 1.8. However, that's a three season lens. Not that I don't use it during the winter, but typically during the winter I will go out with the 85 because that's a little bit tighter and that helps me get rid of a little bit more of the gray grossness that is in the rest of the world. So, shoot tighter. <clears throat> so, uh, tip number three for winter photography is to shoot things that you can shoot inside, which means it doesn't matter what season it is, because, well, you're inside. Uh, and one great tool to do that is a flash. You can actually get them from Amazon Basics for like 40 bucks. They're super cheap at their base level. And those flashes have to be fully manual, which is something you want to use when you're shooting inside, because then you can dial it in exactly as you want it and occupy yourself during the winter. And once you're getting into flash photography, you might want to think about getting, well, first of all, a light stand, because then you can mount your light, and a set of wireless flash triggers, which means you put one on your camera. This is the command, this is the trigger. I put it, pop that on here. And there you go, and it talks to the camera, and the other one goes on the flash, like so, like that, and we'll lock that down, which means that whenever the camera fires, the flash fires, like so. And now, back to the park. Another quick and easy thing you can do to shoot during the winter and make it look better is to shoot in black and white. See, there's not really much color anyway in a lot of the landscapes and things you're going to be seeing, but if you make it black and white, then you're only caring about the contrast in white and dark, and during the winter the sun can be quite harsh, and that can make quite pleasing black and white images. So, try that. Also, shoot in raw, so if it turns out colors are glorious, you can bring them back. If you shoot in JPEGs, once you shoot in black and white, that's it. You can't get the colors back. Sorry. And the fifth and final tip for winter shooting is simply to have your camera on you at all times, which is even more important than during the summer, because in the summer, you can have glorious days, you can have glorious weeks, you can have many, many hours of great light and good times to take images. The winter is not like that. The winter is cold and fast changing and mean. And so when it is glorious, it's gonna be glorious for minutes maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half if you're really, really lucky. But the point is that it's extremely transient when there is good light and when there is good moments and when the snow looks like just that perfect shade of white before it gets yellow and brown and gray and nasty looking, that is an extremely short amount of time. So if you keep your camera with you, you'll be able to capture those glorious moments when they do happen and not have that, I would have had a great picture of the thing that happened uh, this afternoon, but my camera was at home and so I missed it. Don't miss it. Bring your stuff. So I hope you all enjoy this and I hope that if you're not subscribed already, you go subscribe now 
because that tells YouTube and me that people are watching this and people like it and people improve or improving their craft or at least like to watch me waving my hands around. Either way, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you in the very next video. Bye-bye.